Carson Macedo and Tanner Thorson will lead them to green next time by. Rico Abreu, Kyle Larson, row two. Spencer Baston, James McFadden in row three. Brent Marks and Chase Randall in row four. Corey Day and Cy Lynch in the fifth row. Corey Day, remember, he is the Durst Dice Roll driver. Extra nine grand if he can get the win. He's already done it once this year. Eagle Raceway. We got them racked. We got them stacked, and we've got the grandstands packed. Let's go racing off at turn number four. We are green. Good start for Thorson. Hangs with Macedo, but Carson too strong off the bottom. He'll lead down the back stretch. Andrew and Larson already resuming their battle from a year ago. This time, though, it's for third and fourth. A lot of track prep right before the beach to roll off and take a couple of laps here to kind of burn it in. Carson Macedo with a five-car length lead over Tanner Thorson. Thorson gets off the top of the racetrack, goes to the inside in three and four. Here comes Chase Randall around the outside. Randall's up the fourth. Nobody's been on the high side so far except for Randall. Brent Marks gets up there further back in the pack. This is the race for fourth, though. Randall to the high side. Larson on the bottom. A mistake and Randall goes by into four. Chase Randall from eighth to fourth in three laps in the 2KS, the quickest chicken. Looking strong early in this one. Now Tanner Thor's going to try and take that number 88 car up to the top side of the racetrack. Carson Macedo still sticking down low down to the turn of a one. And the more guys that run up there, the more it'll get cleaned off and the faster it'll be with everybody on the bottom right now. Even the crumbs up, it may be a little bit dirty, but if you get up there and run and the guys in the back of the pack join, it'll get cleaned off quicker. Thorson's making Work. Randall is as well, and now Larson's gone up there on the high side, too. Larson under fire from James McFadden. Meanwhile, Corey Day makes a pass on Brent Larson down to the inside of Spencer Baston, the Durst High School driver. Getting by two cars that time by, he's up to seven. Chase Randall is rolling. He nearly got by Rico Avery for the third spot, and now Rico got up there. Must have hurt him on the high side. Now Randall up and over the cushion gives the fourth spot back to Larson, who's been on the high side as well. So costly arrow. Larson up at the fluff, able to get it pointed down the right side and down the hill, and able to hang back onto the fourth spot. Meanwhile, Kyle Ar or Carson Macedo picks up the phone. He dials in the top side of the racetrack. He moves up, gets around the outside of the left car of Bryce Lucius. Macedo now searching around, runs the middle this time at 3-4. Gets sideways off the corner. We got one off the pace, and into the infield, it's Brent Marks. Front wing and left front broken on the 19. There was another car involved over there as well that was able to drive away from the scene. Big implications here for Brent Marks. Came into the night third in the point standings, not only in the midweek money series, but in the overall championship as well with Kubota Highland Racing. 111 back in the full season and 46 back in the midweek series. And Brent Marks, two years in a row, his Eagle Nationals not going the way he had hoped for. We'll see what happens to Brent Marks here via a replay from Flow Racing. The drone sitting down here in turn number one. Oh, Marks, did he throw a slider there on base? Yeah. And he tried to get Crossy on him there. A little contact. So those two were fighting for about the sixth position at the time. It was actually eighth position to be exact. Spencer was eighth and Brent was ninth that last time by. Kid's turning into uh, into a good little race car driver. He's always been fast, as we said, but uh, all of these national races and competing weekly at Knoxville and Houston has certainly uh, done him no harm. Yeah, it's great to see that Renfro 2KS back up front where it belongs here on a national touring stage. Carson Macedo, Tanner Thorson coming back to green. Brent Marks will not make it back out. 32 laps to go. Still a long ways away from home. And this one, we're back on the way. Goes to the top, big slider from Rico on Thorson for the second spot. Thorson able to turn back down the hill. Now Rico gives him one of his own. This is the race for the second spot. Thorson now trying to fend off Larson for third. Rico, we know he likes to play into that little rivalry between the Outlaws and High Limit. He wants to win this thing bad as he looks to track down Carson Macedo. Kyle Larson underneath the Tanner Thorson for the third spot. He's got it off a of turn four. Bottom still just a little bit better on three and four side of the racetrack. Larson darts right to the top in that race for the third over at one and two. Corey Day is on the charge from ninth. The Durst Dice Roll driver rolling the bottom, racing inside Tanner Thorson for the fourth spot. Corey Day a little head off off the corner right there. He's got some good drive right now on that 14 machine. 
into the top five and now sizing up Tanner Thorson. He goes to the bottom, moving up the top side of the number two KS of Chase Randall. Randall trying to get back around the outside. Now three lines in the middle. What a move from Chase Randall right there. Great race for fourth. Chase Randall, Corey Day, and Tanner Thorson comes out the other side for that spot for now. Battle for second directly in front of him was heating up a moment ago as well. Abreu still has it, but Larson had a good look at him. Behind them, this race for fourth, hot and heavy again. Corey Day from ninth slide, Tanner Thorson, and goes to P4. Great maneuver right there from Corey Day to protect any type of move from Tanner Thorson. Corey Day, ninth to fourth, and now steps it back up to his happy place, right up next to the outside wall. Lap traffic about two laps away for your race leader, and Kyle Larson is closing in on Rico Avery for second. Everybody to the high side, all the way through the top ten. That's the fast way around right now. Some slower traffic for the race leader, Macedo, on the bottom. That's Bryce Lucius. But then once he gets past Lucius, he'll have Casey Kane on the high side. As we get a look at Larson, Abreu, and Corey Day there on the bottom, just out of frame. Brad Sweet gets by Tanner Thorson for a moment for the fifth position. Thorson able to get back by him. The last couple of times, the second place car, Rico Abreu, been running faster times than Carson Macedo. And that traffic's getting thicker and thicker for him. And Casey Kane peels to the bottom. That's going to help Macedo. No, he tried to get down in front of Cole Macedo. Couldn't do it. Now where does Carson go? He's got cars in front of him. Oh, Corey Day explodes a right rear on the front stretch. There was pieces of that tire they were over feet the, in the air. Over the scoreboard in the infield. That tire was so high in the air. Zeb Wise runs it over right there on the front straightaway. He grenaded that oh, thing. Oh, yeah. That Guys, was a huge explosion. How reminiscent of Saturday night at I-70, Chase, right here with Corey Day. Feels like almost the exact same place that it let go on him, racing for the win on Saturday night at the Racer Dean Foundation event. Yeah, absolutely, Tony. It looks like hard to tell. Oh, Rico, Abreu's got a problem. Abreu is off the track, I believe, right now, Dylan, and he's back in the work area. What happened to Rico? Did not see that. Day was behind him, so it wasn't like he hit any debris or anything like that uh, from the day car, but we do see him on flow back in the work area off of turn number two. It was one of those right rear explosions for Corey Day. It looked like it blew the Nerf bar clean off the car. And we'll see what happened here to Corey Day via a flow racing replay. And Corey's going to be about. There it goes. Oh, he hit the wall Yep. after it blew. Look at that see yeah. piece. Oh, my gosh. That, like I mean, it was so high in the air. That was unreal. And now we got the drone making its way over to Rico Abra's number 24 car and the 14 of Corey Day. Both of these guys inside the top five in High Limit Racing point standings overall. Rico fourth in points. Corey fifth in points. They were only separated by seven. I think Rico maybe had a flat tire, too, because there's one. There's a carcass of one laying over next to his car that is very flat, and they are putting a right rear mud cover on the Abreu car. So maybe two flat tires at once. Is there something on the racetrack maybe that was causing those? Well, nobody else yet has ducked off to the pit area. We'll give you a little, after that big shakeup here, yeah. we'll kind of run down the top 10. It should be Carson Macedo showing the way. Kyle Larson now takes over second after the issue for Rico. Thorson moves from fifth to third for the issue for Rico and Corey. Brad Sweet's now up into fourth, and Rico's got Rico's got nose wing yeah. damage too. So he hits something uh, very hard enough to not only flatten the right rear, but knock the nose wing about clean off the 24. So so it's Macedo, Larson, Thorson, Sweet, Randall, the top five, and then McFadden, Madsen, Baston, Selzy, and Macri, the top 10 here. As we are closing in on the halfway signal of this race, still a lot of racing to get to here. I wonder, too, if these tires are just getting hot. That's true. Maybe that's what causes, has caused those two problems. That is, that is bizarre for both of those guys to have issues like that running up front. Well, Dylan, I'm no expert. I'm no crew chief, right? I'm down here in the infield. But I'm dead center in the infield. I'm probably a good 20, 30 yards back from the front straightaway and another 20 or 30 to the back straightaway. And this shred of the outside of Corey Day's tire has landed right here in the middle. And like you just said, it is extremely hot to the touch, way hotter than you would expect. 
for a tire that blew off, what, almost maybe two minutes ago now. This tire is super hot again. I'm not smart enough to be able to break down all the different things that could have led to that tire failure, but it flew, like you guys said, way high, sky high up in the air, and it landed right here dead center in the middle of the infield. Quite an explosion on that right rear for Corey Day. Larson has been running a inner and on the bottom and three and then kind of get into the middle like a half slider and it's been working for him so it looks like mosquitoes gonna go to the bottom and i think the bottom on the restarts has been the preferred lane all night because you can almost you can see it from up here there's a lot of moisture on the very bottom but i don't know if it maybe once we're under green you may be going too fast to really hit it right so i think on the restart you're going slow enough you can get the angle right and really hit that moisture on the turn number four so would be surprised if Macedo gets the bottom here and then tries to go right back to the top as we come back to green here with 22 to go. Coming back to the green flag, Carson Macedo back on the gas. Great restart for both Tanner Thorson and Kyle Larson. Larson not wasting any time. Big slider and it turns one and two, takes the lead, hops the cushion, and Macedo gets back by him. Larson knew that was exactly what he was going to do. He was ready for it. He'll try again into turn number three. He'll clear Macedo. Carson crosses back over to the inside. Now Larson across the road of his own. Race for the lead with 21 to go. Larson back to the front. Carson Macedo back to the inside. Here comes Brad Sweet. Three car battle for the lead at the Bikini Zone Eagle Nationals. Off at turn number four. Macedo leads the lap, but Brad Sweet's right there as well. High limit versus the Outlaws on full display. Play right here, Macedo to the lead off of turn number two. Larson tries to get back to the inside. Macedo squeezes him. Larson jams into the inside. He's the leader now with 19 to go. 19 to go. Kyle Larson at the top spot. Carson Macedo tries to throw a slider. Can't get there in time. Slides to the cushion. Here comes Brad Sweet with a run down the back straightaway. Sweet looking underneath of him. Slider for the second spot. Brad Sweet's up to P2. Boy, the intensity is ramped up in a hurry here. Great race for second as Larson scampers away. Macedo tries to squeeze Sweet up to the outside wall. Brad bangs off the ledge. Macedo falls back to fourth as James McFadden moves to third. Here comes Kerry Madsen. Madsen's up into the third spot. And Sunshine off the bottom. Getting hit by several cars down the front straightaway. Tyler Courtney got the bottom of the racetrack rolling right now. He's up to fourth. The madman on the charge, as is Tyler Courtney, who's just climbing around the bottom group of the racetrack, skimming the infield with the left front. This is the race for the fifth spot. McFadden has it for now. Courtney bobbles slightly. Macedo has dropped all the way back into this race with Courtney now for fifth. Last time by, Brad Sweet took a half second off the lead for Kyle Larson. This time, another three tenths taken out of the lead. And Larson's not even in lap traffic right now. So the Napa Auto Parts number 49 car looking strong right now, trying to track down his brother-in-law for the race win. And most of the lap traffic ahead is on the bottom until you get to Corey Day, who's about four cars from the back. All of the leaders, all the way through about the top 15 until you get back to Spencer Baston running the high side. And now Larson's into the slower track. Cole cool. Macedo will be the first one to go a lap down. Brad Sweet, another tenth out of the lead for Kyle Larson. Larson making his way to the outside. Gets by Cole Macedo. Now working around the outside of Jacob Allen and Anthony Macri. But Brad Sweet, you can visually see it, Dylan. He is closing in. The gap has definitely shrunk to the naked eye. Brad's moved off the lane or off the cushion a half lane through one and two. It's starting to get dark over there at that end of the racetrack. Both of them buried with their right rears on the cushion through three and four. Sweet. There might be some rubber developing right off the cushion. We'll see if Sweet can find it first as Larson's got cars right in front of him side by side. Brad Sweet closing in in a hurry in turns three and four. This time by ten laps to go. He's within five car lanes down the front straightaway. And this is where being in second some Sometimes is an advantage because you can try things. You have to try things to try to close that gap. Sweet has closed for sure now as Larson's getting bottled up behind Rico Avery and Casey Kane, the lap cars. Sweet's got the rubber dialed in off of turn number four. Now Larson finds it in turn yeah. one. Now they're nose to tail. What can they do? They're going to try and get by Rico Avery. Same song, different dance at I-70 a few nights ago. They were in the rubber there. They were nose to tail for the top three positions. And this time by, Larson's got eight laps to go. You can smell it. Brad is right there as they both found the rubber now in one and two and three and four. This is going to be exciting, though, if Sweet can get to him. He's got to make his move quick and be perfect and precise with the track conditions of both into the racetrack. Larson bobbles here. Sweet to the inside with six to go. Here comes Kerry Madsen as well. Madsen's there. The race between the lead is for three positions. Madsen in third, Sweet second, and Larson with the race lead. They cannot catch Rico Abreu. Larson is struggling right now out front. James McFadden has closed in as well. Here's another slider attempt from Sweet. Larson gets the power down and able to hold him off for now. We'll come to five to go right here. Battle for third behind him. James, James McFadden inside of Kerry Madsen. Brad Sweet 
Biding his time. Not much time left, though. Working to get by Kyle Larson for a big payday here tonight at the Bikini Zone Eagle Nationals. They are losing track with the lap cars. Larson not catching up to them. Smoke off the right rears this time by four to go. Carson Macedo's move back around Kerry Masson. He runs in the fourth spot. McFadden still third. Sweet has not been able to close on Larson. And the lap cars have started to pull away from the leaders as well. So about five or six car lengths for Larson before he gets to Rico Abreu again. Three to go right there. Three laps to go. Kyle Larson looking for a big win. Back to back. It would be three wins in a row at Eagle Raceway if he can pull it off. This time by two laps to go for Young Money. Not over yet. Larson has got to kind of tiptoe through the tulips over here in one and two. And if he gets to Abreu, he's going to have to strike and strike fast because Sweet will be all over him. McFadden's third, Macedo's fourth. They've checked out from fifth on back. White flag for Kyle Larson. One to go for Larson. A little mistake on the entry right there. Sweet may have some kind of opportunity here in the last corner. What does he do? We're going to fall to the top of the racetrack and off a of turn number four. Three in a row at Eagle Raceway. Kyle Larson wins the Bikini Zone Eagle Nationals. Brad Sweet's second, James McFadden third, Carson Casino fourth, and Kerry Madsen rounds out the top five. Dating back to 2017, that is three 410 sprint car wins in a row for Kyle Larson here at Eagle Raceway. He wins $55,555 here in Nebraska. Brad Sweet finishes second, James McFadden third, Carson Macedo fourth, Kerry Madsen in fifth. And then behind him, it's Tyler Courtney, Chase Randall, Parker Price Miller, Giovanni Selzy, and Tanner Thorson round out the top 10. Behind them, it was Justin Peck, Spencer Baston, Chris Windham, Garrett Williamson, Corey Eliason, Zeb Wise, Corey Day, Casey Kane, Rico Abreu, Anthony Macri. And then rounding out the field, Cole Macedo, Jacob Allen, Bryce Lucius, Cy Lynch, Brent Marks, and Aaron Reitzel the remaining cars in the rundown. Climbing up top for his third career Eagle Raceway win. How about it for Young Money, Kyle Larson. $55,555 going to the driver out of Elk Grove, California. Two years in a row here at Eagle. He was the DJ of the night. Got to listen to his favorite music all night long here. Now he is in victory lane with a big check waiting for him around the front of the race car. Win number three of 2024 with Kubota Highland Racing. Started off the season with a win at, e at uh, East Bay Raceway Park. Got the win about a week and a half ago at Lawrenceburg in Indiana. And now tonight, scores his first midweek money series win of 2024. Tony Laporta, you're standing by to talk with tonight's race winner. Last time we got to see Kyle Larson with Kubota High Limit here in 2024 was not that very long ago. It was the end of May. It was Lawrenceburg Speedway. And once again, ladies and gentlemen, he's found his way to Whiskey Myers victory lane. It's Kyle Larson. Spencer Baston told me right before we got going tonight, he thought this place was like a mini Lawrenceburg. I guess you would agree after going back to back in wins there and a win here, your third straight trip to victory lane here at Eagle Raceway. How much do you love this place? Yeah, yeah, no, I definitely love it. Uh, this track just suits mine and Paul's style a lot. Like you mentioned, it's, it's kind of like a shorter Lawrenceburg, so um, just a lot of fun there. That was uh, just try to kind of settle in in the beginning, take care of my tires, um, wasn't sure you know, if it would take rubber or not later. So wanted to take care of it early. And, um, you know, then Rico had his misfortune. I got lucky. I ran over the same piece of debris he did, and I somehow didn't get a flat. So uh, got lucky there and, and knew, knew I had to, you know, start throwing something at Carson quick. Um, you know, Rico on that restart before was able to get a good run down the front stretch and slide in a second pretty easy. So thought if I could just exit four with some momentum, I just needed to send it. So. Um, Thought I was in a blast through the wall. Um, I was fully dumped the throttle and just matted it before I got to the wall and thought I was gonna flip. And then uh, then we just got going racing there for a minute and um, he just made, Carson just made one error. You know, he should have just got ripping back to the top, but um, he protected um, into one there and I knew it was over from that. So I uh, was able to, to rip by him and protect the slider, you know, the next couple corners. So um, saw Brad's nose too and uh, knew he was there and then 
once it took rubber, um, I was just, I knew I was in a little bit of trouble you know, as a leader and um, I don't typically do very good in the rubber and I just wanted to keep some distance from the lappers you know, so I could keep some air on my wing and stay turning and not get tight and, and slide out of it. So uh, all worked out. I knew Brad was there pressuring me. He, he almost cleared me a couple of times there in a one. So just uh, glad to get it done. Glad to you know, bring home 55,000 to the uh, high limit room here and um, shut out the outlaws off the podium. So it uh, feels good. $55,555. First, I must say, you do an incredible job breaking down that race. You knocked out two questions I had for you about both those battles. So you bring up another point I want to ask you about. Carson Macedo, Buddy Kofoy, Gio Selzy, a couple outlaws come into play. Is high limit turning into what you and Brad wanted, where you get to see an amalgamation, a gathering of the best sprint car drivers in the country racing for big money? Yeah, no doubt. I mean, there's great talent all throughout the country, not just with the Outlaws or High Limit, but um, I think we showed tonight that, you know, we're just as strong as, as their strongest, if not better. So, um, you know, Tanner Thorson up there mixing it up. Uh, there, were, there were so many good guys. Rico, obviously, too. So, um, James, you know, everybody was fast. Brad, we all know Brad's going to be fast. But, uh, yeah, it feels good, and, and, it, and, it, and it feels good, too, and the Outlaws, you know, get their, their couple races that they can show up to, and um, it, it definitely makes, you know, us step it up. I think, you know, for sure, I found another gear on that restart just because it was Carson on, on the, you know, as the leader. So I was probably trying a little harder than I would be if, uh, if you know, Rico or Brad was on the, probably not Brad, I want to be him pretty bad. So, uh, no, it's, um, it's just fun, and, um, you know, thanks to those guys for coming out. I hope Buddy's okay. That was a huge flip there in hot laps right in front of me. So I uh, hate to see that he couldn't compete the rest of the night because he would have been definitely one to beat. Last time we won, you had to ask Twitter for some help with your charity. You didn't get to support the charity typically with high limit. As a full-time guy, you're not full-time with the series. You got to step up and help out at Lawrenceburg. Back in Whiskey Myers victory lane, three in a row here at Eagle. This event, does it compare to much else you've done lately in sprint cars? No, it's just fun. It, I, I really enjoy this time of year. I finally get to get racing a lot, get to tracks I'm familiar with, and um, get to race in front of awesome crowds again. So uh, you thank all you guys for coming out on a Tuesday night here in Nebraska and, and packing the stands. It was, it was awesome to see from my trailer there on the backstretch. So uh, thank you guys, and uh, look forward to seeing the rest of the year, and hopefully catch everybody at Austin Nationals later on. Eagle Nebraska, he can hear you. He's your winner. It's Kyle Larson. <laughs> And he is $55,555 richer. That is not too bad of a Tuesday night of work. Brad Sweet makes his way into Whiskey Myers Victory Lane to congratulate the brother-in-law and the winner, Kyle Larson. We're going to wait for Brad to get back over here in front of his number 49 Casey Kane racing machine because we got to talk to him about that race. Brad. Lots of congratulations going around to the 57 crew. You guys had a great race there very late in the going. Could you have done anything differently? Uh, I mean, I just, I, I think in the rubber, I just was just a little bit better on exit, and I just had a few chances because he was still, you know, not slowing down enough off of four and, and getting the run down the front stretch, and I could see him, you know, struggling, and it's just, you know, you have the run, but the, the problem is he regains enough speed on entry in the rubber, and when you do pull off with a bald tire trying to go across the whole track, it's, it's a, you know, how aggressive do you drive without hitting him or without wrecking yourself? Uh, and I tried to just be as clean as I could, but tried to put the pressure on him. And uh, it's young money for a reason. He, uh, he withstood, the, withstood the challenge. Um, he did a good job getting to the lead. I was just telling my guys, he positions himself really well. Uh, there was a, a kind of a chess match to get the lead there from Carson. And my car was really good. My Napa guys never gave up. I did a, a horrible qualifying lap. And I think we had a car capable of winning the night. And uh, that's all you can ask for. So hats off uh, to all the fans for coming out. Uh, what a crowd. Can't, can't thank you guys enough. And uh, yeah, just can't, can't thank my guys enough. Um, you know, they're working hard and, and we're trying to win these races. A 50,000 on the line on a Tuesday night is pretty fun uh, racing for 40 laps like that at this place. So uh, yeah, just happy, but uh, you know, wish we could have got the win. In only his second trip here to Eagle Raceway, Brad Sweet improves on a fourth place finish to run second. The bad news is Kyle Larson won both of those races in Brad Sweet's attempts here at Eagle Raceway. James McFadden, if my math is correct, which often it is not, this is your fifth trip to the podium in 2024. Quite the rebound after you guys missed those first four races. I have to compliment you. You started doing this in Butler. I love the fashion statement with the Hoosier Tire now headband, traditionally neckband. 
What was your race car like tonight, and what was that battle after that second caution when Corey Day lost the tire? How hectic, how frantic was it at the front of the field? Yeah, it was. I didn't spend a lot of time up there, unfortunately, until the end. We we really struggled on restarts, man. I, I just I would pick the wrong spot to be every restart and probably lose two or three spots. I think at one stage we were ninth or tenth, and you know I was kind of getting mad and then overdriving it and not doing a very good job and and sort of settled in at that one restart and and then started picking off cars. So. Hats off to my guys, uh, they did a really good job. Um, obviously, thank you to TRD and Mobile One and Dennis and Teresa Roth and everyone back at Roth Motorsport. And, uh, yeah, it's great to be on the, on the podium again, obviously. Yeah, this is the second time at a 50,000 win race. We're, we're a third behind these guys, so we need to work a little harder, get a little better. I need to clean up my restarts. These high limit guys are brutal. Um, you know, you just, you take the green and it's, uh, it's slid or be slid. And, uh, uh, it's a lot of fun to race with, and um, I'm enjoying every part of it. And just hopefully we can get a couple more steps up the front. Thanks to all the crowd to come, and it was it was an awesome crowd. It looked like they were having a lot of fun up there, and uh, yeah, it's uh, it all lived up to the hype. It does live up to the hype. James McFadden picked up his first win just a few nights ago at Butler in Michigan. He's got Maverick with him, and they make yet another trip to the podium here in 2024 with Kubota Highland Racing. Well. Dylan, Chase, James McFadden just said it better than I probably could have and certainly a lot quicker than I probably would. Eagle Raceway and the Bikini Zone Eagle Nationals for $55,555. As James said, it lived up to the hype. This racetrack, this facility, and this crowd are not to be messed with. What an awesome Tuesday night here for uh, some big money on the line. Kyle Larson, Carson Macedo, Brad Sweet, so many of these guys throwing bombs. Now I know, after missing this race last year, why they called the Eagle Nationals the most highly anticipated event on the high limit calendar going into 2024. A lot of us on the staff popped up with our heads off the pillow way earlier than our alarms were supposed to go off this morning. And I think if you just watched that race, you know why.